Hello everyone. Welcome to LICD Lecture 3D. Today's topic is Unity Gain Amplifier or Voltage Gain. So let us start with the topic. So this is a familiar non-inverting amplifier. So in this non-inverting amplifier, if we do the following changes, the circuit will become something different. So let us write, so in this non-inverting amplifier, if we consider, so let me take the color of my pen. Okay. So in this non-inverting amplifier, if we consider, R2 as 0, that means it is short circuited, and R1 as infinity. So, what does the expression become? So, we know that the output expression for a non inverting amplifier is given as V out upon V in is equal to. 1 plus R2 upon R1. So here if we substitute R2 as 0 and R1 as infinity, so what this expression will become? This expression will be closer to 1 because this is becoming 0 and this is becoming infinity. So the V out upon V in will be equal will be inching towards unity. That means what? That means that V out is really equal to V in. So we have got this result. If we consider uh, R2 is equal to 0 and R1 is equal to infinity for a non inverting amplifier. Now let us see that if we draw, if we reflect that in this circuit, how it will look like. So let me draw uh, you know this circuit out once so we have to consider let me draw start by drawing the op amp so this is my op amp minus plus and we have a positive supply connected over here so to the in non inverting terminal we have input connected over here v in and that's my v out measured with respect to ground. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to make R2 as 0. So R2 0 means we will connect it like this. It's a generally a short circuit and R1 will be open. So R1 will be open means it will be not be connected. So our circuit reduces to what you have seen in front of you. So the question is, what does the circuit do? And we have already realized the expression as V out will be equal to V in. So let us realize this again by using virtual sort technique. So let me change the color of my pen again and maybe change to red. Okay, so what does the virtual sort technique says? The virtual sort technique says if this is V plus and this is V minus. So as per the virtual sort technique, V plus is equal to V in and uh, we can write uh, V plus approximately equal to V minus. So if V plus is V in, V minus has to be V in. So this V minus, this V minus is also equal to V in. And as you can see, this wire is connected to the output. So this node also is V in. So what we can say by this virtual sort method also that V out is equal to V in. It's approximately same as V in. So what we can say all the time that is the output follows the input. Okay, so that also means that what will be what we can say about the gain of the circuit. So if we determine the gain that is V out upon V in that is equal to 1. 
so what does this circuit do this circuit is you are applying the input and you are getting the same output as the input that means the output is following the input changes and the voltage gain of the circuit is one why do we even use such a circuit what is the purpose of such a circuit so here we can write one of the features of uh, of this circuit is called uh, is, is is having voltage gain as one so why do we use it? why do we even use such a circuit in the first place and what it is called so this circuit has a name it is called as unity gain amplifier uh, okay so let me write over here it has a name so that is unity gain amplifier since its voltage gain is one it's also called as a voltage follower since the output is following the input voltage and it has a very useful and intuitive name that is called as it can act as a buffer basically a voltage buffer so it has its three names one is voltage unity gain amplifier other is voltage follower and other is buffer so these are the three names for this circuit over here which you can see so what does this circuit do where it is used and why do we even require a circuit which will just out, whose output will just follow the input so your answer to the question is something like this so let us consider a situation okay let me again take another color okay so let us consider a situation where you have it is input okay and this is connected to a system so basically this is my vi and we are interfacing we are connecting this vi to a system oh sorry so this is, this v in basically can be a very sensitive so sensor so see v in which we apply it will not be always a voltage source or a you know like a like a ac supplying voltage source it may be a sensor also so let me write over here it can be a very sensitive sensor whose output is very very low let me write whose it provides very low current basically so it's a very sensitive sensor uh, which whose output level is not so high and if we connect this uh, sensor uh, directly to a system the system can actually you know damage this sensor or you know force the behavior of the sensor to change so what do we do so what normally what we do is we place a buffer in between the v in and the system so something like this so if i draw this again so we have a v in which is coming from the source and we place a buffer and then we interface it to the system so what this buffer will do is this buffer will protect the sensor from the system so system is uh, you know having some high current it cannot pass through the buffer and these the input so basically it will act as a uh, isolation between the actual input that is the coming from the sensor and the system so that's one place where uh, we can use uh, you know the buffer circuit now let us come to the another effect another properties of this buffer and why do we use this so there is a problem called as a loading effect so in this loading effect let us consider this diagram so this uh, red color thing is my amplifier equivalent basically a op amp so on the left hand side we have connected a voltage source vs and that voltage source vs has a internal resistance rs and at the output side we have v out basically i should write here v out 
so this is my v out okay okay so we are good to go yeah so this is my v out and we have connected a load rl so our expectation is if we consider this to be an amplifier with a gain av we wish to have that vo output voltage actually it should be v out let me just you know write it so this is actually a v out which is equal to av times vs so i guess i have to write it over here also v out yeah so now it's okay yeah so actually from this circuit we wish to have that uh, you know av uh, v out is actually gain times the to vs you know output voltage is actually gain times vs so that is what we want so we have connected at the input the input source has a internal resistance and at the output we have connected a load so let us see what will happen so however due to this loading effect the actual output voltage is v out equal to rl upon ro plus rl into av times v in and instead v in is also dependent upon vs so av expression is uh, sorry the v out will be equal to av times rl upon r1 plus r2 so sorry yeah uh, v out is equal to av times rl upon ro plus rl into ri upon ri plus rs into vs so we are getting this extra terms over here so which will actually load my system so to obtain the desired value of v not what we need to do is we need to make ri as extremely high and ro as extremely low oh sorry again so if we make that if we do those changes in that expression then we will achieve our goal that is v out will be equal to av times vs and this terms will go so here in basically in this equation if we make ri as very very high then uh, you know this will be infinity this will be infinity and this term whole term will disappear and also if we make ro is equal to 0 so if we make ro equal to 0 then this rl upon ro plus rl will also disappear and at the output we have v out is equal to av times vs as expected okay so do we have a circuit so which is doing something like this yes so the buffer or the voltage follower provides this feature what is the feature the feature of giving ri as infinity and ro as almost close to 0 so let us see that how so we have this op amp buffer so this op amp buffer is the same circuit which we have defined over you know we have just now drawn now this buffer over here let's say that it you have a rl connected at the output node and we are redrawing this buffer with its equivalent circuit so this is my equivalent circuit of the op amp having ri av into v in and ro into picture so that red color dot box which you see is my op amp over here we have just represented in the form of uh, the equivalent circuit practical op amp equivalent circuit and then we have done the connections uh, to the input positive input terminal we have connected uh, that is a non inverting input terminal we have connected the v in uh, basically this should be not v in this should be vs so let me write over here this is vs okay so now it's perfect so this is my v vs is connected to the non inverting terminal and my inverting terminal is directly connected to the output so that's what we have over here and we have rl uh, and we measure voltage across the rl as v out so basically what can we comment over here so the observation is the current drawn from the source vs is small because the input impedance of the op amp is very very large so we have already seen that so what the first thing which the op amp the buffer provides is it has a very large input resistance so this is what the first feature of op, uh, of buffer is let me write over here so here basically ri is very large 
which is tending towards infinity. So that's one of the features of the uh, buffer circuit. And the second is the resistance seen by this RL is actually equal to RO. And RO we have seen that it is very small. For 741 it is around 75 ohms. So buffer has a small output resistance. So, okay. So that means RO for a buffer circuit is tending towards zero. Uh, isn't this the features which we are looking for? You know, just go to the previous circuit. So we have a circuit which gives us a very high input impedance and very low output impedance. So isn't that solving this loading effect problem, right? Which we face. So if we connect something at, at the, I mean, if we connect a source at the input having a finite input impedance and we connect the output load. So that is, that should not disturb my op-amp configuration. So this uh, it output op-amp buffer or the, you know, voltage follower will come into handy over here. So these are the features. So let's, let us list down the features of, you know, uh, this amplifier, uh, unity gain amplifier or a buffer once and then we will conclude for this lecture. So what all features it provides us? So this buffer, so first of all, it will give a voltage gain of unity. And the second feature is its input impedance. So the input impedance of, the, of a buffer is the highest, which is tending towards infinity. And the output impedance of a buffer is close to zero. And what can you say about the current gain? Uh, let me go back to the circuit. Okay. So the output impedance of this buffer circuit is almost tending towards zero. And the input impedance is very, very high. That is almost tending towards, in, uh, in the output impedance is zero. And the input impedance is very high. So uh, our input impedance means very high means what the the current which is flowing into the terminals over here is almost zero. So the current drawn by the op-amp inputs, input terminal is almost zero. And output impedance zero means what it can ideally drive any amount of current at the output. So that means the current gain which is the output current upon the input current is basically extremely high which is tending towards so the current gain over here of a buffer is tending towards infinity. So these are my features which makes this buffer extremely useful because these are the features which we won't get in any other circuit as accurately as in a buffer. So again, we will repeat the voltage gain is almost equal to one. So we have unity voltage gain. Input impedance is very, very high. We have written the ideal condition. The output impedance is extremely low in case of a buffer voltage follower and the current gain is very, very high. So these are the features of a buffer circuit and what does, we have answered the question, what does this circuit do? So I think we have come to the end of this lecture. So we have covered today unity gain amplifier and voltage and, uh, and voltage follower actually. It's a little, you know, a little bit wrong. Actually, it should be a voltage follower. Okay. So, unity gain amplifier or a voltage follower, today's topic. And uh, we have completed this, you know, this unity gain uh, amplifier or we call it a buffer and also we call we can call it as a voltage amplifier so we have completed today's topic so thank you for listening so we'll continue some other topic in opam next time so until then have a good day